Hello and welcome to another edition of For the Record. I'm Sean Murphy. My guest today is a returning guest of the show, although it's been a while. Alan Gauss, president of the Hartford Easter Seals. It has been too long. Welcome back to the show, sir. Thank you so very much for having us. So uh, you are back, uh, president of Hartford Easter Seals. People have heard Easter Seals, but for those who aren't familiar with the organization, tell us about it. Well, a lot of folks think about Easter Seals strictly in terms of children, because the origins of Easter Seals really was children, children with physical disabilities. And while that certainly is part of our present, our Easter Seals is actually much, much bigger, both in terms of the medical services we provide and a lot of other pieces that I'd love to tell you about today. Please, anywhere you want to start. Well, let's talk about our medical rehabilitation services, because that is the origins of Easter Seals. Yeah. It started from a simple notion that there were no programs to serve kids with physical disabilities. And almost 100 years ago, a gentleman had decided he needed to address a, a void in his community. That's been the tradition of Easter Seals, is finding needs for people with disabilities, filling them. It started with medical rehabilitation, physical therapy, uh, but our organization has grown over the years because indeed we are what's referred to as a comprehensive outpatient rehabilitation facility. We're one of just a few in the state that provide this comprehensive level of services. Where we bring together everything from physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language pathology services, neuropsychology services, clinical psychology services, put them all together and help individuals of all ages with all types of different uh, disabling conditions. It sounds like you're almost, you're running the gamut on everything. If there's a need for it, it's almost like you have, uh, you know, something available to help someone. Well, that's our goal, is to try to be any of the things that people need that they can't find any place else in the community. I mean, the simple notion of having this comprehensive medical rehabilitation, it arises from something as simple as, otherwise a person would have to go here and there to pick up yeah. all the different pieces. And our goal is to be an overall solution Sort of a one-stop shop kind of a thing. That's the business of it. You, we were talking off the air, imagine, and, and even more so 100 years ago when this thing started, if something like this wasn't available, to a child in need, imagine where they, where would they end up? What would happen? It could have been a lifetime of disability. And instead now, what it represents is for children or young adults or adults or even seniors who come for our medical rehabilitation services, they're able to rebuild their lives, rebuild their minds, rebuild their entire life into something meaningful. It won't necessarily be the same life they might have had before the accident or the trauma or the medical condition, and it might be different than one that you or I understand, but ultimately it's to create a meaningful life for that individual. And when you go way back then, they certainly didn't understand anywhere near medical uh, things that were going on, w what we understand today, you know? Indeed, that uh, the, the strategies that were available to them uh, medically simply had, to, they paled by comparison to anything we could even imagine today. Uh, but now it's being able to see an individual who might come in in a wheelchair person who might come in unable to use their limbs or unable to see straight or think straight or talk straight, to go through these therapeutic modalities and truly walk out or have a whole new ability that they didn't start with. Yeah. Now, so I would imagine over the course of time, uh, a good organization will evolve and, and sort of expand to meet the needs of the people today. Maybe, obviously, a lot has changed. You've learned things. Things have fallen through the cracks. You adjust, and things are very different now from way back then. Indeed. Uh, <clears throat> because our Easter Seals organization is much bigger than just those medical services yeah. I talked about. One of the important considerations is, for an individual with a disability, if they're looking to create independence and self-sufficiency, simple notion, it's a job. And that's one of the many places that our organization has moved into. In fact, it is now the biggest piece of our organization. Because indeed, the thing that makes you or I independent and self-sufficient is that on, say, Friday, there'll be a paycheck for us because we've worked hard and then we get to use those resources to build our lives, build our, our uh, activities, be part of a community, do what we want to do. It's no different for a person with a disability. And so, lo and behold, our Easter Seals organization is now very big into vocational rehabilitation services. And then when you take into consideration, even for people without disabilities, the economy, the way, what things yeah. happen, job market, uh, people, you know, the big term is underemployed now as opposed to either unemployed or, or employed. But for, for everybody, that need is there. Imagine for those with disabilities. Well, the numbers, unfortunately, are not uh, good ones when you think about an individual with a disability because where nowadays the unemployment rate might be for working age people, maybe five or six percent. For persons with disabilities, working age, 
an overwhelming 70% of all individuals with disabilities are not working. And many of the remaining 30% are underemployed. And so any things that we can do vocationally, helping that person get a job, are key steps to helping them become independent and self-sufficient. And we're very fortunate to have an entire team whose sole focus is helping that individual, individual with a disability, regardless of what his or her disabling condition might be, to help them gain and maintain employment. Now, um, Easter Seals nationally, and there's that, and then there's you uh, uh, for president of Hart Hartford East Easter Seals. How much, uh, how involved are you with the national organization, and how much of an individual organization are you, Connecticut-wise or Hartford-wise? Well, Easter Seals nationwide is about 70 different organizations, each of which is committed to helping individuals with disabilities to achieve those goals. All of us collectively are redefining what it means to live with a disability, but ultimately each one of us evolves to address the needs in our own communities. And so where over the tw 20 plus years that I've been with Easter Seals, we see certain needs evolve, that's where we grow. Whether it's uh, having developed in, at different points in time, uh, stroke rehabilitation programs. At one point we had developed, in fact, the first comprehensive breast cancer rehabilitation program in the country. Or as you'll see in a few moments, or as we'll talk about in a few moments, having social enterprises that help individuals with very severe disabling conditions. We go where the need is. For you, for, for Hartford, for Connecticut really, what is sort of something that you've had to address more so more than others as far as disabilities go? Because like you said, every area, you, you go to the needs of the people. What's in our area here? One of the biggest needs that we've seen has to do with getting jobs. Wow. That's the biggest impact that can have because more so than even what might, I might see in our medical rehabilitation, when I help an individual to gain and maintain employment, I can forever change his or her life. I can bring them opportunity that otherwise simply would not exist. Uh, but we now find ourselves doing it with individuals with more and more severe disabling conditions. And we find ourselves doing it for all sorts of age ranges that in the past we might not, might not have envisioned. Uh, we've developed a school to life program. Uh, this is actually a collaboration with the city of Hartford's uh, Board of Education, where for high school students looking to eventually make that transition from student into young adulthood, we've created an entire school to life program for them, where it's covering everything from obviously work, but all phases of being a part of the community. Just as readily we'll go to an older uh, part of the uh, spectrum. We have a specialized program for seniors, individuals age 55 or older, who have major barriers to employment and will help them gain and maintain employment. These are some of the most challenging populations with which to work, but that's our, our key uh, focus. Because even an older individual without a disability finds it challenging to maybe if they wanted to switch careers or even find a job period now tack on to that a person yeah. of that age group with a disability you would think it's an overwhelming uh, such a daunting task for them and we're very pleased to have an entire team strictly focused just on seniors and i'm proud to note that we actually have one of the highest placement rates for this particular type of program in the country from your perspective even working with those with disabilities um, you can view the economy, you can see what's going on as far as us being out of the recession, you know, the job rate and stuff like that. How does it look from your perspective? It never looks good quite <laughs> enough. Uh, it, is, it is a very challenging job and we're working with individuals with more and more severe disabling conditions. And so even in the best of economies, it admittedly is a real challenge. That doesn't change uh, our uh, direction or our emphasis even in times when the economy is more challenging. If anything, it makes us redouble our efforts simply because that's still the basic way I can get a person independent and self-sufficient. I was going to say, I, I would imagine it sound, if you're passionate about what you do and it sounds like you're emboldened to, you know, accept the challenge and really go for it and then have that much more of a feeling of satisfaction if you can get something accomplished with, with, with the people you work with. That is key. And it's also part of what's aimed us at looking at individuals with more and more severely disabling conditions. Uh, it's one thing simply to see an individual and say, okay, I can help them gain employment. Uh, but now think about individuals who are more and more disabled. And how do you make that opportunity? It's actually one of the things that's led our Easter Seals organization to start doing what's often referred to as social enterprises. Businesses we directly operate 
where we are helping individuals to, again, achieve their goals of independence and self-sufficiency through work. Businesses that we operate, we employ the individuals with dis disabilities, we make them our workforce, we make them our success factors. Because indeed, these businesses, and they're a diverse group of businesses, they are the ways that we can create opportunities for folks. So how do you do it? Do you approach businesses and say, we have a, 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 we have a set of individuals who are available for work, there are challenges for them, but this could be beneficial to both the, uh, the, the worker, your, mm -hmm. you know, your people with disabilities, but also the company that they may go and work for as well. Indeed. When we're working at placing an individual in the phrases competitive integrated employment, just a plain old job out in the community, it's actually a one-to-one uh, uh, -one matching where every individual is going to present with different needs, different interests, different vocational goals, and every employer presents with different needs and in individual positions that they're recruiting. And so it's truly making that match, not necessarily that there are one or two employers who are uh, perhaps more open-minded. It's that with each and every job opportunity, we see if we can make a match for them. But are you finding that employers and companies in general really like the idea they're on board with this and they want to um, be able to accommodate if possible? There are a number of businesses that I'm very pleased to be able to work with where they recognize it as an opportunity. Bear in mind, they're also looking for a capable individual who ultimately is going to be committed to that job. And in the case of an individual with a disability who may indeed have struggled more than anyone else to get in the door, they become all the more loyal, all the more productive, all the more aimed at success. Yeah, they, they're happy that they have the job. There, a yeah. lot of opportunities probably don't come their way in the first place, so they're going to do their best. They're going to work hard to keep yeah. the job and probably end up excelling at the job, right? And indeed, there, where there also are potential tax credits for, for businesses, these are just some of the many different aspects that ultimately make a decision for uh, or lead to a decision by a company that this is the right way to go. We're going to take a break and come back. I want you to give out a website for people to go and learn more, and then we'll get back to the discussion. Indeed. You can find us at www.hartford.easterseals.com. All right. Alan Gauss, the president of the Hartford Easter Seals. We've got a lot more to get to, so we will. When we come back, I'm Sean Murphy. This is For the Record. Stay right there. Welcome back to For the Record. I'm Sean Murphy. My guest is Alan Gauss, president of the Hartford Easter Seals. Uh, right when we went to break, I had you uh, give out the website for people to go and see. What's on the website? Uh, you're going to find information about the different services we provide. You'll find information about fundraising events that we do. You'll find information in general about how individuals with disabilities can realize their goals in life. All right. Let's continue on the, uh, the subject of social enterprises because that's a big thing and that's important. Sure. I'd mentioned earlier that there are some individuals with very severe disabling conditions who, notwithstanding our best efforts, they're not ready for employment in a regular job. Um, just to create a metric that might mean something, if you think about a person who might be at 15 or 20 or 25 percent productivity, that would be a very hard thing to sell a company on that they should be ready to employ that individual. It's not a matter of the companies uh, not being interested in supporting individuals with disabilities, but there is this very simple reality. A person with such a severe disabling condition is going to struggle to be a valuable employee. Right. And a business, notwithstanding that we might put forward job coaches to help them get to levels of productivity, uh, says, is this really the best place to start? Right. Well, that individual still has to start someplace, and so part of what we have done at Easter Seals is create social enterprises, businesses we directly operate where we're employing these individuals with very, very significant degrees of disability. Individuals who, again, just to use that metric, might be at a 15 or 20 percent productivity level. They are the workforce for these social enterprises. They are the ones who make these businesses successful, and indeed, as you'll hear, they have been incredibly successful for our organization. Uh, it's taken us into areas as diverse as electronic component assembly, wow. uh, mailroom operations, we have a business of secure document destruction, and we now even have a line of jewelry that uh, we make. Well, let's talk about that. You have it right here in front yeah. of us. This is actually an outgrowth of uh, our School to Life program where, again, remember, these are kids from the city of Hartford. 
uh, in coming to Easter Seals for their school, uh, their regular education, their high school students, um, and they're learning how to be members of the community. In School to Life, they'll learn vocational skills. They'll also learn digital literacy, self-advocacy. Uh, they'll learn about how to be part of their community. They'll learn all the different factors of what it means to be integrated into the community. Um, but one of the things that we had initially done was had uh, these young adults, these youth, volunteering, doing com uh, community activities because we wanted them to get used to not just being in the isolation of a, of a school, but rather part of their community. Uh, when the kids realized that they were now volunteers and charitable supporters, they said, wait, we want to do even more than that. We want to donate monies to, to worthy charities. We needed a way to do that because while these, uh, these students are certainly earning uh, income when they're working in our businesses, oftentimes their families are saying, no, you know, we're, we are struggling financially. Anything that uh, the student is earning needs to come back into the household. So we decided to create a very different model. And it arose because one time I gave a tour to a national jewelry designer and she looked at what we were doing and she said, this is the most amazing thing. I want to be part of it. Uh, that uh, designer, Elise Rosenstock, is actually the creative force behind Elise Ryan. You'd find uh, her, um, her jewelry being sold in high-end stores, but just as readily you'd see them on home shopping network uh, stations like QVC or Evine. And she had said, well, look, maybe I could design some jewelry that the kids in the program could be manufacturing. And then I said, and maybe instead of, in, where is the case in many of our social enterprises, the profits from those businesses are actually just plowed back into Easter Seals to support other things that uh, we can't necessarily afford to do. Uh, let's dedicate all of the profits so that the kids can then make charitable donations to the charities of their choice. And so it evolved that we started creating jewelry pieces. You see some of the bracelets there, or some of the necklaces. So the students, your, your people, start made this from scratch, basically. They make all of the jewelry. Wow. They do all the assembly. They do all the, the gluing, all of the quality control. They do all the assembly. They do the fulfillment. And then using the example of the bracelets there, for every piece that's sold for $35, the kids are donating $10 to a charity of their choice. The very first charity we started working with was the United Way. The kids had identified a women's literacy program that they wanted to support. And lo and behold, within weeks, the kids became among the top 5% of donors to the United Way. Wow. Think about it. Yeah. A kid age 16 or 18 years old in the top 5% of United Way And donors. these are kids with disabilities, correct? With um, disabilities of all sorts. Yeah, wow, that's and amazing. And they do all of that and more. We've since gone on to, to pick up many other customers, uh, the Jewish Federation, Friendship Circle. Uh, we have commercial uh, accounts like Voya. Uh, we're supporting programs for kids with developmental disabilities. We're supporting uh, teacher recognition programs. Uh, because the kids were interested in animals and disabilities, uh, we just started working with Fidelco, the guide dog company. Excellent. Um, and the amazing part of it is, with all of this work being done by the kids, we've gone on to sell thousands upon thousands of pieces of jewelry. Wow. And the kids are the success factor behind it. And this is only a little tiny sampling of, of what see, they do. These yeah. are just some of the pieces that yeah. we do. Wow, that's beautiful. And it's an amazing thing when uh, the kids are motivated where we had a, 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 a really caring individual, the designer Elise Rosenstock and her Elise Ryan company, making it all work for us. Uh, before we run out of time, I want to get to another uh, subject, which is fundraising. All organizations have them. You have them on a regular basis, including some coming up. So let's talk about that. Sure. Uh, looking ahead, in September, we move into some of our uh, big fundraising events. Uh, on the 10th of September, we will be having our annual Walk With Me event. It's when we hold at Old Mystic Village and the Mystic Aquarium. Uh, I know there are a lot of different walks, but imagine a walk where, in addition to supporting Easter Seals, you'll spend your time commuting with penguins, 
and beluga whales. Because indeed, our walk goes through with the, with the gracious support of the Mystic Aquarium. You spend your day walking through the Mystic There are the people that would, just, that would just pay to go to the Mystic Aquarium anyway because they want to go there. Now you can be a part of a walk, a fundraising event, and still enjoy the aquarium at the same you time. Do your walk through the aquarium, and after you're done doing the official walk, you have free admission back into the into Mystic Aquarium. Uh, it's just a wonderful collaboration of Easter Seals, Mystic Aquarium, and Old Mystic Village, and we're really pleased to be there. September is a good time to have a walk too. You don't want to have it in the in the heat of, of the summer, you know, when it's too hot to walk. And, and September's it's cool, a little cooler, you know. And it's our perfect. corporate sponsors guarantee us perfect weather for the day. They guarantee it no matter guarantee. what. Yeah, excellent. And that's only one of the the many events like that that you sure. have, right? Sure. Later on in September, we have our annual uh, golf event. Uh, this year, we'll be at Fisher's Island again. Uh, one of the most exclusive golf experiences. Uh, and again, a major fundraiser for Easter Seals. Do you do them all year round, uh, even in the winter? Uh, we'll try to avoid yeah. the winter time. Uh, but uh, as the cycle then uh, works around the year, we also have our black tie event, our gala, the crystal ball, which is a major fundraiser for our organization. That happens in the springtime. And all these events and many more are on the website, correct? You come to our website, www.hartford.easterseals.com and you'll find out more. You guys are plugged into social media, I would imagine, too, uh, right? Facebook, Twitter, yeah. you find them all. And the links to those uh, uh, social media sites will be on the website, so they can probably just go click and go right and through. And you'll see all the answers. Tell me about the day-to-day the -day duties of the president of uh, Hartford Easter Seals. It's probably very different and something all the time, which makes it exciting, right? There is not a dull moment yeah. to be had. I've been doing this for 22 years, wow. and what I find is that each day is an opportunity to find another piece of where we can go with our Easter Seals organization. Uh, it means that while I may have trained as a psychologist many, many years ago, I think that's the only thing I don't do for the company. <laughs> but maybe that's because we truly have one of the biggest teams of neuropsychologists in the state of Connecticut. So I guess that's why they don't need me to do that. Well, it's funny you mention that because I know that there are other Easter Seals uh, locate organizations within the state, but depending on the person's need, they may end up seeing you regardless of where they are because of what you just said. You have the, yeah. the biggest, right, neuro uh, in the state? That's correct. Uh, Connecticut is blessed to have a number of Easter Seals organizations. Each of us evolved again in response to our local needs. Uh, but one of the needs that had arisen in our community was having quality neuropsychological services. Uh, you'd see these services used for individuals of all ages, from little itty bitty kids to, to seniors. And it became one of the centers of, of expertise for us. And the demand just kept growing. And the next thing you know, we have one of the biggest practices in the state of Connecticut for neuropsych, neuropsych services. That's outstanding. Are you uh, looking for volunteers? Is that a thing that you would need we're, from time to time? We're always looking for volunteers. Because whether it's volunteers who come into some of our different programs and are able to participate to actually our medical director is a long-standing volunteer. He's been volunteering with us for a mere 45 years. That's it? What's he doing with the rest of his time? Uh, yeah, that's fantastic. But just as readily in our fundraising events, we always appreciate the support of volunteers who help make them successes. All right, and uh, it's hartford.easterseals.com? That's correct. So that is our show for today. We learned so much. Alan Gauss, president of the Hartford Easter Sales. I, we could probably do a whole other show on this, but thank you for being with us today. Thank you so very much. That is our show. You can watch this show and many others on our YouTube site. Till next time, I'm Sean Murphy. This is For the Record. Take care.